What's going on guys? Dave the Usher here and uh, this has been a long time coming. Uh, literally my wife and I are on the verge of moving and we're gonna be tearing down all the stuff in this house that we're renting. We're moving into a house that we purchased. We're gonna be homeowners. So before uh, we move all our junk in there, we gotta pack up all our junk from here. And uh, th the last couple years, you know, after various live streams and videos, people see stuff behind me and they're like, hey Dave, what's that? You should do a video tour and that kind of thing. So I thought, well, it's, it's either now or never. So I'm gonna do a video tour and I'm gonna show you every single thing behind uh, this. Let's see if the dogs bark. There they go, there they go, see? See that? <laughs> I'm gonna show you, who's that? Who's that? I'm gonna show you every single toy I have on display, which is literally 99.9% .9 of my collection. What's going on, guys? Who's that? Who's that? <laughs> the dogs are thinking someone's here. I'm gonna show you like every toy I got on display. Like I said, like 99.9% .9 of everything I have out right now currently. It'll never be like this. Not in the new place, probably not everything. So uh, it's a little rough. Uh, some toys have like fallen over and I mean, you know, I'm on the verge of moving so it's not like I'm really trying to keep everything looking as nice as possible. I'm just gonna get ready here to go in so yeah the the upkeep could use a little work you know that's just how it is right now but uh you know this is what it is it's really messy like i said really messy uh also a lot of the furniture and stuff i'm probably gonna be throwing some of that out uh, i'm gonna do a, a room tour of my of my new place so you can i don't know you'll see like kind of what i keep what i get rid of this and that uh, I guess I'm gonna start here with the the door that we just came in even though you saw some other stuff Yes, I like Beast Wars and Transformers a lot of you should know that um, Okay, I've had this poster for a while. It's just a typical uh, Glare glare is an issue, huh? It's just a typical oh, it's from the other window. You know what? That's just the way it is man Typical Transformers the movie the only true movie uh, poster some of the stuff in here is autographed. Uh, I guess I can point some of that out. A um, couple of uh, Beast War posters here. I got these from uh, BotCon 2001, which was in uh, was it Charlotte, North Carolina, I believe. Maximals and Predacons. Who's a big Beast Wars nerd here? Because if you are, you know that they forgot Inferno, and then they had to reship one out that included Inferno. Uh, Inferno right there. I have the other poster somewhere. Uh, okay, let's just move on over here. I got a couple of, uh, well, we can also go above the door. You know, uh, a big Thundercats fan here. I was at PowerCon 2013 in California back in the day, and I ran into like pretty much all of the voice actors like uh, Peter Newman and uh, <laughs> Larry Kenny and just like everybody i had them i usually don't get them personalized to like you know hey dave but in this instance i did it was really cool seeing um oh well david subalove's uh transformers uh prime shockwave is up there <laughs> but it was really cool seeing pretty much all of the thundercats cast there uh that was alive uh, except uh, uh earl hyman wasn't there who was alive at the time. I just recently found out he passed away. Uh, look at the posting date. Pretty much several months before this video was posted, which is pretty sad. Uh, he voiced Panthro. God, I love Panthro. Love that cartoon. That was like my first cartoon ever. Being a kid, being alive that I, I recall seeing. Uh, some of this stuff here, this is just art I've you know, picked up at various Transformer conventions throughout the years, like a RetroCon or a TFCon or a BotCon or a PowerCon, you know, whatever. Um, the autographs you see mostly are signed by the, uh, like the artist, but you know, a couple, Alec Willows, he's my favorite Predacon of Tarantulas, Venus Terzo, Black Arachnia. This, this is not autographed. 
No Scott, I do have Scott McNeil's autograph in here, and I wish Chris Lotta was alive to autograph you, Mr. Cobra Commander. How you doing there? Awesome stuff. That face was my, oop, <laughs> hit the camera on the thing. That face was my original avatar, my original Dave the Usher avatar back in the day. Hello, how are you? Okay, let's move on to toy time. This is uh, pretty much all Beast Wars, Transformers, below is some G.I. Joe. Um, yeah, all this stuff is, uh, was collected by me back in the 90s. I, I know, it's just so much. I do not have every single Beast Wars figure. Uh, there is some Beast Wars Neo and Beast Wars 2 figures. Very few. Very few. Um, that's like the Japanese cartoon stuff. But, uh, yeah, I got, I tried to organize it. It's really hard. I, I kind of, what did I put? Predacons on the left and... Maximals on the right and tried to organize it as best I could but sometimes it's it's kind of a space thing You know, I wanted to put like all Transmetal 2s together all Transmetals together all this and that together You know try and organize it as best as possible But you kind of have to work with the space and like the figure size, you know Put figure size like the big ones up top Definitely as you can see um, Yeah, I mean they're just ah, oh, there's my Transmetal Tarantulas. Oh, man, and this is that right there is the Repaint Fox Kids Transmetal Tarantulas. Uh, a, kind of a harder figure to obtain. I do have some rare Beast War figures in here in their packaging. Is everyone is everyone still excited and interested? Are you bored yet? <laughs> I don't know. Just got a lot of Beast War figures here. I have watched a couple videos similar to the one I'm doing, so I'm going to try and pan as smooth as possible. It's tough up top there, but I'm going to... Try and pan as smooth as possible, if not for your sakes, but mine as well, because I want to save this. Yeah, as you can, yeah, you know, I told you guys some, you know. Oh no! Uh, oh, what's your name? Razor Beast. Razor Beast. What happened? You've you've fallen in battle, isn't that right? Snapper. Oh, look, everyone! It's Snapper. He's snapping. This is crazy. I remember most of their names. Hey, that's an R.I.D. figure right there, I believe. Recolored Pterosaur, no! That eh, makes sense though. And Scorponok, I see you back there. How you doing, buddy? I do not have Magna Boss. Uh, where's Tripredicus? Tripredicus, I don't even know where you are anymore. Uh, oh, Tripredicus is up here in the back. There's his face. How you doing there? I do not have Magna Boss, actually. God, some figures I don't have still. But uh, I honestly, as of right now, I don't know if I'm going to have this on display at my new house. I really don't know. Um, that's sad, right? I really wanted to get every single Beast Wars, um, you know, American Beast Wars figure. Um, so yeah, Scorponok, we're moving down here. There's some Beast Machines. I also have a lot of the Beast Machine figures. Once again, definitely not all of them. Um, yeah, you, you can, can you just see how sloppier it gets with the designs? Like, um, okay, that is Transmetal 2 Megatron from Beast Machines right there. And, uh, there's Transmetal, it's like the same guys, Transmetal 2 Megatron right up there. But uh, that's the Beast Wars figure, he's kinda, he's behind a lot. Ooh, Dinobot 2, how you doing there, buddy? All right, let's move back down. Oh, you know, actually right there, this is a kind of a rare, is it Beast Wars Neo or Beast Wars 2 figure? It's the recolor of uh, Sky Shadow, where are you, Sky Shadow? Right there, just a recolor. No one cares. What am I talking about? Okay, um, so moving back down to the Beast Machine stuff. You see, I could just start ranting about this boring stuff, you know? Like, ooh, this figure is rare. Ooh, I like this figure. But, um, oh my god, Silverbolt, you look horrible. Beast Machine Silverbolt, it's terrible. You Transformer fans know what I'm talking about. Okay, so, uh, yeah. Moving down here to G.I. Joe, um, yeah, I got I got a decent amount. This is like the new wave of G.I. Joe figures that started coming out. When was it, 2008? You know, there's the old kind of look. There, actually, there was three, technically, I would say three looks. The the original, and then they started one in like the around the 2000s, early 2000s, and they quickly switched it over about several years later. There is, uh, there is the Revenge of Cobra Under Disguise Flint. He wore that in the Revenge of Cobra miniseries. That's why I got Mutt kind of right next to him. For those of you, oh, and of course, right behind him, makes sense, Roadblock, who's struggling with the vines. Those of you who are G.I. Joe fans, you know you know exactly what I'm talking about. And uh, the first, uh, 
First miniseries, there's old school Snake Eyes in that old outfit carrying that canister. And, you know, he met Timber. <laughs> For those of you who know G.I. Joe, you know what I'm talking about once again. Uh, this is the, the mass device. It's incomplete. Do I, where's that weather dominator? Uh, where the, oh, it's back there. See, I just have too much. So yeah, when they were rele they were releasing stuff, they had us kind of fans in mind. Um, yeah, this stuff is just incomplete. You had to get, oof, they're selling real expensive right now. Cobra Commander are looking good. I got like 10 versions of you on display up here. You know, and I, I just tried to get all the ones that I like the most. Like I've always been a fan of early 90s Cobra Bat. Just like that color scheme. I just think it looks kind of cool. It's very 90s. Uh, oh, I love I love the Laser Viper and Interrogator from the early 90s. Once again, I you know as I said, these are the um, the new looks, not the old designs. Old school Destro in the back there. Major Blood. I remember being a kid and mailing away for for you. Iron Grenadier standing next to Destro. And there is I've always loved that new look for the Cobra Viper. Some of these were. Uh, were exclusives from you know conventions or the G.I. Joe Collectors Club. I also have some Transformers Collectors Club stuff in here. And uh, I've always liked the Crimson Guard Immortal figure. There you go. So there's like the old school looking bat. Actually that's the cartoon bat. He's got the red visor and not the white visor. I've always preferred the red cartoon look. Red cartoon visor. But I don't know. Hey man. Just a lot of figures, right? A lot of figures here. Obviously, I kind of I've put the ones that I care the least about in the back, kind of. Or if I have doubles, like if I have uh, more than just one. I mean, there's my favorite right there, Crimson Guard. It's in the back. I've always liked the Lamprey as well. But um, yeah, I have a couple of Crimson Guards. Definitely have always loved the good old Crimson Guard, man. Yeah, there's one right there, Crimson Guard. Yeah. Oh. Okay, but okay, so just G.I. Joe, hey, G.I. Joe, I have a story about you, you right there, buddy, I used to have a, an old school G.I. Joe figure, this guy right here, and uh, one of my school friends, quote unquote friends, stole him out of my desk, never got him back, very unhappy about that, I'll never forget that, I'll never let it go, and I better never see him again, better never, see, we're, we're gonna fight, I want that figure back, Kevin. You, you stole, you stole my Night Viper. You stole my Night Viper, my original, I replaced him. I'll show him to you. Uh, yeah, I have, I'll have a, a lot of old G.I. Joe figures too. Not as many as I, but hey, like at, at some point it's like, dude, I think I have too many toys, right? Yeah, I think I have too many toys. So Cobra's up top, G.I. Joe's, you know, good guys down below here, you know, Duke and, and Flint and Lady J and, uh, you know, who was Snake Eyes and Quick Kick and Low Light. Whoever else, they definitely have more Cobras. Hey, Wild Bill, how you doing over there? All right, he's having a good time. Wild Bill. So uh, yeah, probably see He-Man down below. I have a couple of He-Man figures, not too many. Yeah, I have some He-Man and some Turtles. Um, just not a lot, just not a lot. Down here, I got like uh, this couple of original old school uh, Transformers from my childhood. Uh, you know, hey, you used to have more, but I'm sure I'm not the only one that had uh, parents that threw away some toys here and there throughout their, throughout their childhoods. So that's annoying. There's a 2011 Thundercats Panthro figure back there behind the Rick and Morty stuff. You know, just because Panthro's my favorite. 2011 Thundercats. Yeah, kind of wish that was coming back instead of uh, 2019 Thundercats. <laughs> Does the internet know about that yet? That that cartoon? I haven't read anything. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> uh, looks like the the female Power Rangers are taking a nap, and uh, <laughs> I don't know some uh, Power Ranger figures right there. This right here is a repaint from a Transformers Prime figure. Uh, yeah, Bulkhead. This was a uh, Shartacon, Shartacon exclusive Transformers figure from the only Shardicon in Charlotte, Charlotte, North Carolina. That's why it's called Shardicon. Funny, right? Um, I can't remember uh, the company that, you know, made them up. It's escaping me right now. Oh, it's at the tip of my tongue. Uh, whatever. So I got some various uh, other figures over here, as you can see. 
looking, oh yeah, Cloud and some Final Fantasy figures, some He-Man figures, just a couple of various things. Skeletor has fallen over. There is my original King Hiss. Snake Man, He-Man figure back there. His, uh, his, what was the slogan? His skin comes off and his evil comes out. He-Man was okay. You know what's interesting? I actually have no Ghostbusters, the real Ghostbusters figures. Did I have some toys back in the day? Sure. I don't know. Just for whatever reason, I haven't collected any. I guess it just doesn't interest me. So I guess that's it for this whole shelf right here, guys. I'm going to just pan over, and we're going to start down below here. All right. Um, these are Thundercats, original Thundercats figures. Some of them, a couple, one or two here and there I've collected recently, like uh, Ben Golly right there, and the snowman behind him. Um, some, and Chitara. I was so mad, I never had a Chitara in my childhood. Like, she's kind of important. It's kind of important. It's like my parents didn't get me the female figures with my toys, and I just, I don't know why. I probably am not the only boy that kind of had that same thing. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe little kid boy Dave, like, didn't seek them out really either. It's not like, I don't think there was a, a rule in place, but, like, I never had any female action figures that, that much. Not my kids, man. When I have kids, I'm going to see to it that they have their female action figures. They, you need them. You need them. There's my uh, original Lino, original Tigra, you know, original Panthro. I had doing buddies in the Thunder Tank. That's my original Thunder Tank. Has a lot of wear and tear. They got all the Berserkers and Mutants. And there's uh, the Mumra you had to send away for, I believe. Mutants in the back. Ultimate uh, Mumra right there. How you doing, buddy? Groon. Hammer hand. Yeah, man. So just uh, definitely not all the Thundercats, you know, a decent amount, but you know, there's more. There's more. I used to have an original Cat's Lair. I had the Cat's Lair, my parents threw it out. So angry, I'm so angry, I'll never let it go. Below here are a lot of 2012 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle figures, yeah, yeah. I actually really like that cartoon. Uh, I will say though, these figures are not terribly important to me, honestly. This right here, Armagon, this is so cool. I grew up reading the Archie Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle comics as well as the Mighty Mutimals. For those of you who are familiar with kind of just the newer Teenage Mutant Ninja, Tur Ninja Turtle cartoons, dude, the Mighty Mutimals, that was a thing back in the early 90s in the Archie Turtle comics. And there, there was they had their own comics. I used to read them and uh, Armagon was, uh, you know, he was here and there. I need to go back and reread those. I used to be a big fan of those, man. So, I mean, uh, yeah, the Krang, Bebop, Rocksteady, Karai, Usaki, Fish Face back there, Shredder, you, whoever, you know, the Turtles. I really dig that cartoon. I have not finished it, actually. Uh, I was, I got like one season. I don't know, at some point I'll rewatch it. But I was very happy with what they did with that cartoon. Uh, I got some more, um, well, that's like the new t turtle van. No, that's the whatever that one was called. But yeah, a couple new 2012 turtles still down here. Uh, but you can see some original stuff now. Like there's Bebop, Rocksteady, Krang, and, and so on. You got some of the original turtles slash over here. Uh, in the back, I don't know what I was thinking at the time. In the back, you can see some of the movie figures, the movie, the recent movie live action figures behind Ray Falea. He was my favorite Mighty Mutimal. But uh, I don't know why I started collecting those. I was having a problem, man. I, and by the way, I have not seen either of those live action movies. I haven't seen them. I'm gonna stand up here. I haven't seen them. I don't, don't care about seeing them. Uh, let's just start in the bottom row then, bottom shelf. Um, a lot of this is newer Transformer figures, like from the, you know, wh what are we on right now? The Power of the Primes lineup? You know, there's a lot, of, I have a lot of uh, Combiner War figures because I got a lot of pretty much all not all but most of the Combiner figures some I don't have on display like uh, I have Devastator Combiner Devastator I have Fortress Maximus 
Uh, they're, they're not set up. They're in my closet kind of behind me, actually. Oh, like I said, 99% I have on display. But, um, yeah, it's a little mixed up here, here and there. Like, every now and then you'll see a Sentinel Prime from Transformers Animated. I think that's the only animated figure I have out on display. I don't know where I got him. Probably at a convention for like a buck in a bin. You know, sometimes you just buy a figure, a random figure for a buck in a bin. Some Transformers Prime figure. There's uh, War for Cybertron Optimus right there. And behind are the combiner figures like Menasaur, Computron, and you know, whatever else. Oh, actually, you know, technically isn't that, that's Transformers uh, animated Cheetor. So I, I got like a, one or two animated figures, sure. Rat Trap and Depth Charge, how you doing there? There's a Masterpiece figure. Yeah, I got a couple of Masterpiece figures. Below, downstairs, I should say, I have a nicer bookshelf with my higher end, I'll say that high end collection stuff on it. And I'm kind of skipping, I'm skipping around actually. Well, let's finish finish with this uh, shelf here. You know, I got the, uh, the Seekers and Megatrons and uh, <laughs> there's one of my only movie figures right there. God, he's, ugh. and he sucks. It's a horrible figure. Movie Optimus there from whatever movie. Um, okay, so down below, and after I'm done showing the shelves, I'll like pan out so you can see like a wide shot, I guess, if you care. So yeah, you know, and it's, as you can see, you can probably tell I try to group things sometimes. It's hard to group things, especially when you have such limited space. Like, gee, hey, look at all these guys from the movie that appear together, right? Yeah, coincidence? No. Cup Hot Rod RC Springer. Uh, no, wait, where's, where's Springer? We got Cup and Blur. Uh, Springer, where'd you go? Ultra Magnus there in the back, you know? But uh, yeah, some Insecticons. There's Galvatron with the custom helmet. I actually did a video about that custom helmet back in the day because the one that he comes with sucks so bad. Uh, there's my Final Fantasy XII guide right there. Uh, incomplete walkthrough, good God. I need to get back to that. So yeah, there's like a little mini shelf just because I had a little space right there. You know, as you, you can kind of see the setup there is a Bailey dog bed. Okay, now let, I'm going to start back up here and just move up here. Um, more figures, more figures. Transformers Prime Wheeljack, I got that autographed by, uh, okay, is it, Jam it was James Horan. I think that's how you pronounce the last, Horan. He was a really nice guy, yeah, he voiced Wheeljack, uh, Wheeljack in Transformers Prime. He was a really nice guy cool guy he does I think he does mostly live action though really Steve Bloom I I have Steve Bloom's autograph and a couple things here and there throughout uh, my room you know he voiced a uh, Starscream there's Greg Berger he voiced movie lockdown in the video game in the video game I don't know I don't know about the movie I didn't even see that movie I, I couldn't tell you so yeah um, a lot of autographs here. A lot of autographs I I have obtained from the uh, from the voice actors at various conventions. You know, uh, Alan Oppenheimer, who voiced uh, original Skeletor. He actually voiced uh, Breakdown back in the original Transformers Transformers movie uh, or uh, Transformers cartoon, I should say. Uh, Daniel, oh my god, it's embarrassing, but yeah, his last name escapes me. He voiced Starscream in, um, he, he's like, uh, he's a fan who got to voice Starscream. That, that's the story. Daniel, his last name escapes me, man. I'm sorry. It's embarrassing. I can't, is it Daniel Ross? Maybe. Yeah, he's a voice actor and actor. He's, he's done various things. David Sublove, of course, Death Charge, Transformers Prime Shockwave. These are not autographed. Uh, they're a little more on the rare side. Transformers Universe figures, Dinobot and Cheetor right here. And you know, the newer released uh, Beast War figures and Beast Machine figures. Uh, I have them autographed by Scott McNeil, as you can see. And uh, Richard Newman, who I met at TFCon 2015, was it? I think so. 
Buff here. Uh, this is signed by Scott McNeil. I met Scott McNeil at what TFCon 2016 or something, <laughs> 17. I can't. I really can't remember right now. But this I obtained at Botcon 2001. Yeah, Botcon 2001, TFCon 2016, 17, whatever. Scott McNeil, Alec Willows was at that one. That was pretty cool. Um, and yeah, this is. So there's some autograph stuff in here, but also, uh, also just some figures now in general. Fox Kids uh, repaint Cheetor, and there's some Beast Machine stuff. I do have, like I said, some autographs. Like there is uh, David K. He autographed uh, Beast Beast Machines uh, Savage no Noble. So he voiced him. Venus Terzo, Black Arachnia. You know, this is kind of a rare figure right here from the Beast Machines line, Rapticon. M uh, M O C that is mint on card, you know. Hey, oh, this hurts my arms holding the camera up like this. But yeah, Transmetal Two stuff. And oh no, guys, you thought it was done, but there's one more. There's one more. See how high it goes? Hello, Bone Crusher in the corner. Bone Crusher and Torka and Wolf Fang, who was originally supposed to be in the Beast Wars cartoon. Uh, Grimlock, Beast Wars Grimlock, and uh, hey, you know, just more Beast War figures. Just up here, there is a UK uh, variant of Waspinator, Biocombat. Got that for some reason. And finishing up with Laser Beak up there in the corner. I'm gonna pan away and put my arms down because they're tired. I need to give them a rest. So if I back, well, I'm gonna just back up here. You can kind of see, and we'll get to that other wall. Let's just see how it looks from afar. Oh man, yeah, it's a lot, right? It's a lot. Okay, and there's my desk, by the way. I know some of you probably just want to see like my recording setup, kind of, right? Here's my desk. I've had this desk for all, uh, many years. It's very worn. It's very worn and torn and kind of crappy. Like, look, it's really bad. Um, I, I think I need a new desk. You know, I want to get a new... I really like this desk. It's a really nice... It's a nice big desk. Um, but it's time to uh, it's time to switch it up. And I think I'm going to get another new monitor. Um, another new monitor. And uh, I kind of I kind of use three right now. This, this is my wife's. Like, it's an old, old little one. These two, I specifically... You know, they're nothing special at all, trust me. But... Uh, yeah, I, I play all my games on that one, and then there's my mic, and it sits to the right of me, and this is kind of like, uh, you know, off to the side, right? And, you know, it, when I'm streaming, like, let's say I'm streaming, there obviously there's the webcam, I'm behind it, I'm, re I'm recording, I have, like, screen stuff over here, and, and just various stuff in case I need it over there. There's my computer. Um, I've been over this in the past. It's a, it's a big old computer. It's really fancy. Uh, it's in, it's from Ironside Computers. I would not recommend Ironside Computers. Some of you who have known me for a while know what I'm talking about. Uh, I hate Ironside Computers. The, it, it had a lot of issues. I'm glad I had that extended warranty. Uh, it's been fine for a long time though now. It's been working great. I wonder how obsolete it is anymore. I don't know. I've been so busy the last couple years. Marriage! Marriage sucks, man. Don't get married. Your life gets complicated. <laughs> but I couldn't even tell you uh, where uh, where I'm at with how behind I am with some things um, being obsolete. Let's get back to the Beast Wars stuff. Um, I'll start up top here. Just a couple of various things still, uh, like Sky Shadow. Actually, well, honestly, this right here, I wanted to put the original Rock Bubbles. What am I talking about? Well, um, you see, these are kind of more circular, more or less, and smooth-ish. These are what they called Rock Bubbles. They were released first. These were the first Beast War toys to be released, and they all have this Rock Bubble look to them. They're like, they're the they're the first figures to ever get released. Um, yeah, so they're rare, rare. More money, more expensive. Boppity boppity bop. Uh, but back to the top here. I uh, I put just a couple of various figures up here. Like there's Black Arachnia and Quick Strike. Um, you know I I also wanted to put all the 
I don't know, all the characters from the show kind of over here. More or less, more or less. But uh, yeah, down here it starts getting into like the show characters, uh, like an original Rhinox. Uh, signed by Richard Newman. He was not a, a rock bubble. There's Silver Bolt, signed by Scott McNeil. His autograph's right there. Um, yeah, Air Razor, Tigatron. Moving down below. Um, yeah, these are all... How many? Yeah, there was eight. Eight original rock bubble figures. That was all. That's how many were released. Iguanus. Down there. Waspinator. Pterosaur, Tarantulas. I don't have any of these autographed. I didn't want to, actually. I just wanted to preserve these without any markings or anything like that, you know? Just original rock bubbles. There's original Dinobot. I actually have another of him in storage, as well as Cheetor. And rock bubble Rat Trap, you know, Cheetor. And that's Razor Beast. You saw him on the shelf. He took a fall, I believe. Yeah. So the rock bubble figures. Here's my bright window. My bright window. Okay, so back to... Maybe I can pan out again so you can once again see what it looks like, you know, from afar this time. So I've covered that whole wall, right? From there uh, to there, basically, right? Yeah. So here's my desk again. Here's more desk stuff. <laughs> you see, uh, I'm in the G.I. Joe figure subscription service. I just received these like a day ago. Hello, Ice Viper. How are you? Cobra Arctic Transport Officer. What? Yeah, Ice Viper. Whatever. Why do we need so many names? Some uh, gifts for people. I just got back from vacation, kind of. Uh, I yeah, see. You probably noticed that Pikachu, my wife, got me there a little while ago. Um, okay, yeah, like, what, what do I got here? My PS3 up top. I got my PS4 down below. My horrible shelves here. Oh my god. There's my Nintendo Wii U, and yes, guys, that's an Xbox One right there. Uh, God, I, I gotta move. I gotta put this stuff in a better set. It's just horrible looking. I gotta get out of here. Um, all right. So, actually, can I turn this on? Maybe it'll, it'll help a little. So this is a cool wall over here, right? We're just gonna just start back up here. Some more art. Some of this was from... Uh, like PowerCon and then BotCon 2001. Is that a Dan Kana? Dan Kana is an artist. He's one of my favorite artists uh, who does a lot of Transformers stuff. Uh, I think that's Dan Kana. Yeah, well, maybe not. I know this stuff is. That's signed by Gary Chalk, who voiced Optimus Primal. And yeah, some of this. This is like a lot of BotCon 2001 stuff right here. And me, Grimlock, Greg Berger. Yeah, a lot of these people, they do the um, convention circuit, you know, so you're going to see the same people at a lot of conventions, like a Greg Berger or a Scott McNeil, you know, people like that. Let's start down below, okay? So, like, it's very junky, but I got some stuff back here, too. little print of uh, Wheeljack, signed to me by James Horan. Uh, Alan Oppenheimer, he's a really nice man. Just in general. Like I said, he voiced original Skeletor. Isn't that right, Vinny Testaverde there? How you doing, man? Okay, go Jets. So, oh no, Waspinator, you're a little, I don't like how you're, see, there's just too much crap in here, man. That's why I don't think I'm gonna display all this stuff. Because when you have too much, <clears throat> and I, this room is not big. If you don't have a lot of space, it just doesn't look that good, you know? Because you gotta like, put, you gotta put it all together. So these are all Transmetal figures right here. Transmetal Predacons and Transmetal Maximals right here. This is like, not all, and like I said, there's repaints here and there. Um, once again, autographs like Richard Newman. Yeah, not autographed by Trans, autographed Scott McNeil's Waspinator. Up here, we have kind of various stuff like um, the original line, some Transmetal stuff. Oh, and some rare variants. Okay, so check this out. We have like Inferno and what Inferno could have been with Scavenger up top. You know, original Scorponok. These are all mint in boxes, by the way, of course. Um, so right here, we have Transmetal Megatron. This one's signed by David Kay. There's a couple of variants, and you can probably see already. This is the very rare pink Transmetal Megatron. 
It's very, it's very rare. I don't think you can even find one of these on eBay. That's where I got mine. Um, there might be one. Go look it up. Go look up pink transmetal, pink Beast Wars Megatron. I would use that for searching. Pink transmetals, uh, pink Beast Wars Megatron. You might, you might find one. I wonder how much it goes for. I bought mine for about a hundred several years ago from this posting date. And, uh, okay, so there was the original purple, and then there was the, the pink, and there was supposed to be kind of a bluish. Now, you prob it probably looks... This one, I'm even iffy on. I gotta tell you, I'm a little iffy on this one. Because I'm not sure if one's more blue than the other. But I have seen pictures, and there is, like, a more blue than purple variant of Megatron. To this day, I'm still iffy on that. There was also a couple of variants of Transmetal Optimus Primal. Now, you can see original right here, just, you know, basic blue. These might look the same color to you right here, but if you take them in certain light, there really kind of is a difference with these two. Take my word. There's kind of more of a pinkish and more of a purple, but, and I have seen the difference. That's why I'm, I'm not suspicious on this one because I kind of, there is a different tint. There really is. You just, they have to be in the right light. But, um, yeah, here they are. Pretty cool, right? So, yeah, a couple of rare variants. Uh, moving up, I have, you know, like the bigger stuff. There's Depth Charge and Tiger Hawk. Depth Charge signed by David Sobolov there. This is his autograph. And Tiger Hawk, uh, this is a rare Transformers Robots in Disguise. Uh, Transmetal 2 Megatron repaint called Cryotech. You might remember him from comics. And then moving on to, like, you know, Transmetal 2 Megatron just from Beast Wars, right next to him. And then uh, Rampage. Rampage over here. I believe Earl Campbell passed away a couple years ago from the posting date. He was, he was the first Beast Wars uh, voice actor to pass away, it seems. Which is... Which is sad. Uh, up top here, the bigger stuff, and you can kind of get the gist of it. I got like in the middle, Optimal Optimus, and then the Optimal Optimus repaint, Primal Prime from Beast Machines. Kind of a rare figure, by the way. Uh, and then, you know, original, well, not original technically, but eh, whatever. Uh, season one, Beast Wars, Optimus uh, Primal, and above him, a, uh, was it BotCon 2002 exclusive, which I did not attend. Um, Ape Link. Here's a repaint of Transmetal Optimus Primal. So I got like pretty much all the repaints of this guy, right? I think, I believe so. Good God, there's so many. But yeah, you know, and then there's just typical Beast Wars Season 1 Megatron. Above him is an autographed Beast Machines Megatron. I, I showed you on the shelf the comparison about how horrible it is. I mean, you got like that dragon and that dragon it's just really just horrible okay i'm gonna zoom back out here's an old school tv i wish i kept mine i got this from my buddy uh he gave it to me giving a thumbs up uh he gave it to me for free um because dude you should hold on to your old tv they come in handy they come in handy you can plug in old school old school uh video game stuff here is, here is, I participated in, uh, was a Kickstarter. This is a Nintendo game, Eskimo Bob. I used to love that web series. I still do. So I got an, uh, an NES cartridge of Eskimo Bob for my NES right here. Here's my, uh, it's an old PlayStation 2 down there. I got an old VCR. Uh, where's my, oh, hi. Hey, look, it's Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> I believe this will work, by the way. Um, let's turn the TV on. So, uh, oh, don't you just love that sound? Don't you just love that sound? Excuse me, Powder Toast Man. Just gonna, just gonna play. I don't know if this is set up correctly. Don't you just miss, don't you miss that, by the way? I miss it. I don't think it's set up right. Is it channel four? It's always three or four, right? Oh, bummer. Uh, 
I can't get it to work. Toe Jam and Earl uh, figures. Man, I would have killed for these as a kid. I got this from the Kickstarter. I was just playing the game. It was a closed beta. I'm not allowed to talk about it. Just recently, I'm gonna just turn this off. I don't have time for this right now. So yeah, various figures as you can see. These are my original Mario uh, McDonald's Happy Meal figures from back in the day. Happy, I don't have the Luigi. That's the only one I don't have. Pisses me off. Uh, instead I have two uh, Koopa Troopas. And the Koopas and the Troopers were up to misbehaving. There's a Lion-O figure from the, I, can't, I don't even know what the line was called. <laughs> yeah. And some, po you see, just too much stuff. More like art posters. This is like just a Cobra soldier guy. And you know, some, some Joes, the big, the big, most of the head honchos right there. Um, like Hawk, comic Hawk though, really. I would have preferred brown haired Hawk. Uh, Duke, Flint, Snake Eyes, Scarlet, Roadblock. <clears throat> no beachhead? Alley Viper, he's badass. And uh, oh look, Perceptor. And your autograph, that's awesome. Good stuff. Paul, uh, oh, your last name. Paul Eating? Paul El Elding? Damn it. I know I'm pronouncing that one wrong. Yeah, the original uh, Preceptor, you know. This, this is pretty cool right here, I think. Uh, an animation cell from the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Hello, Leonardo, how are you? Signed by uh, Cam Clark? Yeah. I met him twice, actually. I met him at a RetroCon here in Philly, where I live, and uh, a PowerCon. I got this at the PowerCon, actually, in California, 2013. Uh, an original tarantulas uh, art uh, model sheet. Yeah. <laughs> so I got that. Okay, below, this is like some real messy stuff here. This is like the messy stuff. These are original G.I. Joe figures. Um, a lot of them are from, directly from my childhood. Some are new. Some are from my childhood that I repaired with a part or two uh, here and there. This, you know, this, uh, oh, yeah, these guys have seen better days. They're just, I'm sorry guys. Like, I know the upkeep has not been good. It looks like there's been a big battle and, uh, I don't know who's winning. I don't know. Um, I have two Crimson Guards here. This is a, a very new, nice looking one. You know, his, his paint looks really good. And his joints are tight, take my word. Uh, an original Cobra Commander. Ooh, nice, he looks awesome. But over here, guys, this figure is from my childhood right there. Uh, you can, I mean, see the paint wear. His tights are his tights. His his joints are tight. Oops, excuse me. His joints are tight. I don't know what I said. So I mean, he's pretty tight because I put a new like rubber band in there because his torso fell off. But uh, yeah, he's pretty tight, loose here and there, and the limbs kind of. But um, this figure wasn't exactly mine from my childhood though. It was my cousin's. And every time, you know, us boys got together, I would wanna, I'd wanna use this figure and play with him. Um, I was obsessed with the Crimson Guard figure. Still am. You know, he was my favorite. Uh, my cousin, no, I didn't steal. My cousins gave him to me uh, at some point when we were kids. And I still have him to this day, man. There he is. With the paint wear and all, which I like. I like the paint wear, you know? It just, uh, it reminds me of childhood. Even that, that paint wear. You just remember. Re you remember what he looks like. That's what your childhood figure looks like. Not exactly. Not that. I mean, that's that's the guy. He looks cool and all, but that's the one that you remember. Okay, and just, you know, various figures over here. You know, Serpentor. There's that Lamprey figure again. And uh, here and there. Here and there. I don't know. Is this a lot of G.I. Joes? Or original G.I. Joes? Kind of. Like I said, there's been a big battle. There's been a big battle. That's Zartan from like the early 90s. I did not like his orange mohawk. And little, uh, zo eh, focus. Little Kid Dave took it out, cut it out of the top of his head because I thought it looked stupid. And then I painted the top of his head with a black magic marker. Uh, yeah, it looks way less stupid now, don't you think? I don't, why do kids do some things? Kids are so dumb sometimes. I was just, what are they thinking? What are, why did I do that? Oh, I always liked you, Techno Viper. That is not my original Techno Viper, though. I think my original is away, because he's really loose and messed up. Uh, Cobra Law, baby! 
These are also not my original Cobra Law figures. They got trashed. They got shredded. What's up, Dice? How you doing down there? So, uh, yeah, oh, and some Mortal Kombat G.I. Joe figures. Yeah, some. The Ninjas and Goro, and I see Johnny Cage. I have way more Cobras than G.I. Joe figures because the, the Cobras are better and more cool. The end. That's all. So, okay. Like I told you, some of this stuff. Um, yeah, there's Devastator, by the way. Ugh. I can't, uh, this, it, I don't have time. To, I need to, like, have a Transformer nerd over to set some of this stuff up for me. Um, Michael Bell, autograph this, BotCon 2001. There's, like, a lot of the characters he played. Is that, is that all of them? Or, I don't know. That's a cool-looking Shredder, right? There's Panthro. There's the Light Glare. This right here I obtained at BotCon 2001. That's Thundercracker. The signature is from John Stevenson, a World War II veteran who voiced him. He, he did a lot of Hanna-Barbera stuff. He was the last Hanna-Barbera main guy to be alive. He's passed away since, but uh, yeah, I ran into him in BotCon 2001. I've always liked this one. Oh, the artist's name escapes me right now. Oh, I follow him on Instagram. That's a really cool picture of Soundwave. I'm gonna zoom out here again. You can see my closets back there. Some various clothes. So yeah, here's this corner, right? Uh, let's go back in now, up top here, because I used like on pretty much all the space in this damn room. Um, do I have you autographed by Jason Marsden? I believe so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jason Marsden voiced uh, G.I. Joe Renegades Duke. He was at BotCon 2015 in Ca California. And uh, Maurice LaMarche. That's Maurice LaMarche's autograph, believe it or not, right there. The squiggly lines. He voiced early 90s G.I. Joe Deke. G.I. Joe Deke. Uh, a low light. <laughs> and uh, I also got him the autograph of this figure. I believe he voiced Heavy Duty. Maurice, Maurice LaMarche said to me, you, you sure I voiced this guy? And I'm pretty sure he did. I mean, I looked it up. Mike McConaughey. I got his autograph and a couple things. He voiced um, original cross country. I got him on something else somewhere. Storm Shadow, early 90s Deke. Deke, G.I. Joe cartoon. Uh, Scott McNeil voiced Storm Shadow in that version. A lot of the Beast War actors... Well, they voiced a lot of stuff together, but they were uh, a lot of them voiced in G.I. Joe. Like, here's another example. Uh, David Kay voiced Deke, G.I. Joe Hawk right there. <laughs> I remember, this is, yeah, the talking, the three battle command talking one. He led, Cobra. Yo, Joe, move out. And I, he was playing with it at the convention. It was funny. David Kay is amazing. Oh, man. So, Arthur Berghart. He voiced a couple of uh, old school G.I. Joe characters like, um, uh, like, uh, where, where the hell is, oh, I can't remember his name. It's funny, he, put the, he puts the date on it. You can see the date. Um, Frost, uh, I Iceberg, God, I don't know why his name was escaping me. Iceberg, I was going to say Frostbite, that's someone else. Iceberg, but most famously, of course, Destro, a name I would not forget. He voiced Destro and uh, Devastator. Uh, <laughs> Devastator, are you okay? You voiced Devastator in the original Transformer G.I. Joe cartoons. The the man is amazing. He's quite a character. Uh, very A very interesting man. Very interesting man, Arthur Burkhardt. There's like a three-pack here. Um, it was pretty cool. Uh, I used to love the Blizzard figure when I was a kid. I don't like his repaint. It looks like Snow Job. Like, that's Blizzard, I think, right? But... It looks like Snow Job, and now Snow Job looks like someone else, and they it's like a repaint. I don't know. This It's always kind of bugged me. But yeah, Rob Paulson, I got him to sign this, as well as Arthur Burghardt. They were at uh, RetroCon 2016, or was it maybe, or 17? Eh. Well, Arthur, you put the date on it, right? Uh, yeah, 2017. Well, no, that, that was from... I met Arthur at two places, RetroCon and TFCon, actually. Uh, anyway, who cares about the silly details? 
So, yeah, I bought this because it was pretty cool to get, like, two autographs of the two characters they voiced on and, like, one toy on one card. I don't know. I thought that was cool, personally. So, yeah, back to those. And over here, you know, I have uh, some more G.I. Joe figures. Like, this one was uh, signed by Michael Bell, who voiced Duke. Uh, Arthur again on Stalker. D did I get you autographed? I don't even know. Maybe not. I don't see it. I got him on that, though. There's a Destro and uh, Firefly. Greg Berger voiced him and voiced a spirit. Oh God, I'm gonna have to stand on something. Hold on, let me zoom out. There's a couple of vehicles up here because I have no space. I have no space. A couple of, uh, this this jet is like new G.I. Joe and these vehicles are old G.I. Joe. And there's Slaughter and the Slaughter Marauders over here. Oh, how am I gonna pack all of this shit? I don't know, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Uh, there's my Night Viper. There's my original Night Viper. I had to get him back, right? He was stolen from me. Uh, Major Blood. See, some of these I was gonna get autographed, and some of them I just I didn't end up doing. Because, hey, I don't... <laughs> I've spent a lot of money, as you can see, but, you know, sometimes the autographs cost money, too. Um, Night Viper in the Deke, G.I. Joe early 90s cartoon. He was voiced by, um... Uh, Maurice LaMarche as well, when Lowlight showed you his figure earlier. In the cartoon, in the miniseries, Operation Dragonfire, Lowlight uh, knocked out a cobra and took his uniform to, you know, be undercover. Uh, what a horrible cartoon. And, uh, yeah, he was, like, in a night, uh, a night Viper uniform. That's why I had him autograph this. Only uh, a G.I. Joe fan would appreciate that. Correction, only a G.I. Joe fan of the early D cartoon would appreciate that. <laughs> So, yeah, you know, G.I. Joe Resolute Cobra Commander, sure. And there is, oh no, it crashed. Crash landing, crash landing, guys. This is the Turtle Blimp, not the original Turtle Blimp, the 2012, the, <laughs> the 2000, oh no, the 2012 Turtle Blimp. Um, and on the side, because it's Philly, it's RetroCon, I live here, uh, someone else lives around here, of course. Uh, James Rolfe, the angry video game nerd. I still haven't seen this movie. I haven't, and I haven't seen it. But I've met him a couple of times. He's interesting. A little taller than I thought. Um, yeah, I've seen him t uh, two conventions now, probably three, if I go to this upcoming RetroCon. Um, yeah, he's a little taller than I would have uh, thought. But uh, yeah, he's always a nice guy, of course. Very nice guy. Um, this is my uh, Commando Arcade. I was gonna say original. Commando Arcade, but what, what does that original part mean? Um, it works. Uh, don't ask me to turn it on right now. It works, but it is kind of uh, a little used and abused. Not by me, just in general. Bad boy. Just in general. Um, free play. Free play. When I move out, I'm going to take, uh, take this arcade to a place called TNT Amusements, a place I've known about for a long time. Uh, and actually this guy, since we do, you know, we kind of do live in the same area. This guy did a video on it. He did a video. He did a couple of videos on it. Um, but I'm going to take this place. I'm going to take this arcade to a place called TNT Amusements and have them, have them, uh, you know, clean it out and make it like brand new, uh, you know, repair it and make it, make it shiny, make it new, make it beautiful. So uh, I can't wait to get that done. I bought this this arcade machine back in 2003 or four, um, pretty locally. I used a, an old friend's van of mine for transport, transport it. Uh, another friend helped me lug it up the staircase. Uh, at this place, at this new place, it was just the movers. They moved it up here. Um, I bought it though for, I think it was $175. It was, it was, a steal like no fooling it was a steal 175 dollars and it works pretty well um yeah it's a little more i don't know the sound like fades in and out like i don't know it has problems but it still plays fine 175 bucks i thought that was a steal man still do i will always keep this thing around i'm never gonna whoop, i'm never gonna sell this off here is an old green chair <laughs> yeah and there is a really horrible, crappy studio light. It's not good. Okay. <clears throat> Here, I'm gonna just do a quick, uh, hey. 
There we go. Hi, Lion. Oh, how are you? I've shown everything over there now, yeah? I'm like pretty much done, actually. This right here is a Colorado Avalanche jersey. Uh, this was from, a this jersey specifically was from the uh, 2013 season. Uh, this jersey was worn by Paul Stastny on Adam Foot night. Uh, they won that game. Uh, Adam Foot, as you can see, played for the Avalanche from 95 to 2004. And then, again, 2008 to 2011. This was a game-worn jersey by Paul Stastny. Um, yeah, I'm a Colorado Avalanche fan. I don't know why. But I'll be honest with you, I'm very lukewarm. And I, I have not been keeping up these past couple seasons. Because, I mean, here's the thing, man. They play, like, over 100 games, and I'm a big-time football fan, and I don't have time for this stuff. Like, we're people, and we're busy. You get married, and then you have kids, and then, dude, like, when do you have time? I can't watch 100 hockey games, and it's just too much, you know? It's just too much. I can't. It kind of bums me out. It I, I literally get sad when I look at this thing, because it's just like, I spent a lot of money on this thing, and I like it. I still like it and all. And I got that nice display case. Um, but it's like... I want to I wanna follow. If I had the time, yeah, I'd follow more closely. Paul Stastny, I, I believe, is still on the Blues. And they got rid of Matt Duchesne, right? Isn't he on Calgary now? I think. Uh, yeah, I like... I have, a Matt, I have a Matt Duchesne authentic jersey in there. Uh, damn. And they got rid of uh, uh, Ryan O'Reilly, a little bit even before Matt Duchesne. Uh, they got Landis Cog and Nathan McKinnon still. Gabriel Landis Cog and Nathan McKinnon on the Avalanche still. But uh, I don't. I just I can't keep up with it. I'm more of a football fan anyway. And you know, here's the thing. Uh, in here somewhere, uh, in the closet somewhere, I have a couple of hockey sticks. Game used hockey sticks. One by Paul Stastny again, autographed, and one by Semyon Varlamov, who he better still be on the Avs. Uh, one autographed goalie stick by Semyon Varlamov. So that's in there. Okay, so that's it. Uh, yeah. Is that it? I'm saving the best for last. The really high-end stuff is downstairs. But, um, and no, nothing is on the ceiling. But that's it, guys. This is, this is my room. It's kind of small. Um, it's, you know, it's just time to go, right? You know, I want to get some new furniture. And, uh, and it's just time to go. You know? And all of this stuff probably won't be on the walls. And I'm having an anxiety attack thinking about packing this. Packing this up. So, goodbye forever, room. You've, uh, you've done your job adequately. Okay. Okay, and I have saved the best for last. Lulu, have I saved the best for last? How you doing, honey bunny? Lulu, have I saved the best for last? Yes, I have saved... The best for last. Uh, right here is a bookshelf. It's kind of down here at the bottom of the staircase. And it has, uh, it has a lot of cool stuff here. A lot of cool stuff. I guess we'll start up at the top. Um, just various uh, figures from the shows I love, from certain like toy companies. These are like high-end statues. Uh, basically, Crimson Guard and Cobra Commander and uh, Hard Hero statues like the exclusive BotCon 2001 Unicron. I actually have the majority of the Hard Hero statues. Like, there's a Devastator, a Megatron, an Optimus, Prime. You know, just the various busts that they've released uh, throughout, the, what was it, the early thousands? Yeah, yeah, early thousands Hard Hero. They were pretty cool at the time. Uh, of course, there's so many different types of Transformer statues from different companies over the years. I don't have them all on display, like I said. That's Masterpiece Soundwave right there. I don't have, a, I wish I had more Masterpiece figures, but they're expensive. That's just the way it is. I do have a couple down here though. Uh, Mezco, I believe, yeah, the Mezco company, Thundercats, the big ones. Um, are these Mezco too? These smaller ones, I can't remember anymore. Some of these names, some of these terms escape me. I'm sorry guys, I don't know what to tell you. But yeah, they're really cool, I don't have a, the Mezco, the giant ones in the back, I don't have a Panthro, I don't have a Chitara, who else was there? Um, yeah, I wish I did. But, you know, I do have the smaller Panthro from the other collection here with Pumira. Pumira was the, she looks good, man. These figures look good. Like, Pan, that is the toy we wanted when we were kids. And there's Jackalman right there. They look good. 
This is, uh, hello, there is Batman the Animated Series. Batman right there. My arms are getting tired. Up above there, that is, uh, dude, that is an encased masterpiece uh, Optimus Prime. In fact, uh, oh god, it's hard to, you got the rating there, AFA rated, dude. Yeah, 2000, 2012, uh, I don't know, you read the words up there. I got the camera pretty high. And what's the rating anyway? I believe, yeah, it's an 8.5, which is pretty good. It's like, what, a, would you say a B plus? Yeah, man, a B plus. That is AFA graded rated. Locked away forever. Okay, I'm coming down here now. I have a couple of the, uh, what, what is it? S, uh, SH, how do you pronounce it? Fig Yarts? Fig Yarts Dragon Ball Z figures, you know, like Frieza uh, Piccolo that's in his box back there because he's signed by Scott McNeil because, so because Scott McNeil voiced Piccolo in the original. Yes, Lulu, thank you, good job. In the, uh, in the original, Dragon Ball Z animated uh, series, you know, the, the first dub, right? The ocean dub or the pioneer dub or the whatever dub you want to call it, I don't care. But yeah, he originally voiced Piccolo and then stopped and then started again. And I don't know, us Americans didn't see that when it started again. Let's not get into all that, man. And there's so much, there's so many dubs. I don't have the time. This is an original Optimus Prime Generation 1 figure. Uh, it's not mint in the box, but it's complete in the box. And it is signed by Peter Cullen. Uh, he was, I have never met someone like Peter Cullen. I don't know, that was, that was a pretty cool, pretty big deal to meet Peter Cullen. He is an extremely warm, kind, awesome individual. He is amazing. I, if you get the opportunity, take it to meet Peter Cullen. Pay the money or whatever, whatever you gotta do, meet him. This is the, oh, I can't remember the special term right now. This is the box error version of the Transformers Prime. And I say box error because this, see how his, his vehicle, it's sticking up. It's sticking up right there from the box, as you can see. It like folds over to the front side. So it's called the box error version. Yeah, so that's the version I got. Uh, you know, Marissa Fairborn, Flint and Lady J's daughter. You know, G.I. Joe Transformers exclusive figure, boppity boppity bop, whatever. Uh, let's go over here, actually. This is a masterpiece, a mint in box masterpiece. Uh, hot Rod figure, you know, or I, really Rodimus Prime, masterpiece Rodimus Prime figure, signed by Judd Nelson. Judd Nelson is a very interesting guy. I met him at uh, the last ever BotCon that ever happened. The last ever BotCon. Was that, was it 15 or 16? I don't. When was that? Whatever, it was the last BotCon. I miss you, BotCon. So yeah, Judd Nelson, the Transformers animated voice actor, uh, Hot Rod Rodimus, who actually has reprised his role since in a couple of different ways, hasn't he? That's Air Razor, repaint Air Razor from Windblade. Repainted, BotCon exclusive. Laser Optimus Prime, Laser Optimus Prime, early 90s. Um, this one is mint in the box. And this is signed by Peter Cullen as well. His autograph right there. And uh, yeah, so I got like an Air Razor right there and I got a Tigertron. There were like a couple in Beast Wars. So I thought, hey, it's cool to kind of pair them up. You know, I try and pair people up and, you know, make it look kind of presentable. If you're a fan of these shows, like you kind of can, you can see the setup I'm going for, you know, hey. Uh, down here, this is not an original Skeletor. This is like a, you know, a reprint Skeletor figure, but it's signed by Alan Oppenheimer. So yeah, that's cool. That's cool. I mean, cause it's still kind of original Skeletor, right? The original mold. Uh, behind Masterpiece Optimus Primal here is, uh, is a Black Arachnia, a repaint Black Arachnia signed by Venus Terzo right there. Just gonna move you back here. And uh, I don't know, sometime during what was the early thousands, they started going back, back to the 12, uh, 12 inch uh, G.I. Joe figures or whatever. Uh, Rob Paulson, Snowjob, of course. 
This right here is an extremely, probably one of the more rare figures I have. This is a BotCon Transmetal 3 Megatron. He's a repaint from Robots in Disguise, early 2000s uh, Megatron. This guy, I think he's on eBay for like about 400 bucks uh, here and there, you know, whatever. But uh, hey, what's behind you, by the way? I'm just gonna pick him up. I'm afraid to touch this guy. Oh, a slipstream. It's my wife's favorite character. Why? Because of Transformers War for Cybertron, the video game. They need to use Slipstream more, and in fact, I think they are in... I think they're gonna be using Slipstream in Transformers Cyberverse, the new cartoon or you know, whatever. I kinda... See, right now he's like leaning forward and I don't let... That's bugging me. I gotta fix him now. I gotta fix you after a... Yeah, you see? Scaring me. Like, I am scared to touch this guy. I really am. I'm a, I am intimidated. I am slightly intimidated by this one. Jesus Christ. So, yeah, he's, he's pretty rare. He sold out so fast. Um, I was very lucky and fortunate to get him. This is like a Thundercats Classics figure. You know, once again, I've seen Larry Kenny here and there throughout the convention years. Uh, you know, I got his autograph. I th is Larry Kenny going to be there again at this upcoming 2018 Retrocon, maybe. Jeez. I think he is. Uh, okay, some various Beast War figures right here. And I don't know. Vegeta's down here for some reason. How you doing, man? Um, but yeah, Matt, like Masterpiece Cheetor right here. I like I like the Masterpiece Beast War figures. Masterpiece Dinobot is coming out soon, followed by uh, Masterpiece Beast Wars Megatron. Can't wait for that. This is uh, Scott McNeil, Transmetal 2 Dinobot, autographed at uh, BotCon 2001. This, uh, because both voice actors appeared at TFCon 2006, 16, 16, 17. Ah, uh, the years blend in my head now. But um, yeah, Alec Willows and Scott McNeil both were there. So I got the, um, the two-pack, the Beast Wars uh, Japanese two-pack. I mean, it was just too perfect to pass up that opportunity. I mean, come on, I got both autographs on the both figures because they came together. That's cool. Here is a very rare, um, this is interesting. I was obsessed with meeting Alec Willows and this is autographed by Alec Willows, but I did not obtain this autograph. I bought this on eBay. This is a couple years back. And also I bought it because uh, Fox Kids Tarantulas, the repaint Tarantulas is a pretty rare, rare figure. He's pretty rare um, to get, in just in general. So I wanted it for a couple of reasons. Uh, it's too bad, like if that wasn't autographed, I I don't know, maybe I wouldn't have had it autographed, but eh, whatever. Maybe I, I, I could have. The point is I could have. And that is his autograph. I mean, it looks exactly like the others, you know? So, I mean, you can pretty much tell that. I mean, it's legit. I'm not worried about any autographs not being, I haven't really obtained any autographs that weren't by my hand, you know, by by me giving something to someone. Except for that, I think. That tarantulas right there. Uh, I guess time to go down. Yeah, yeah, we did all this. Let's go down here. So down here, I, I have on display some G.I. Joe figures on the shelf in front of the boxed ones. Uh, kind of like, I would say, quote unquote, the more important figures. Like here's like, you could call them the Cobra Law figures. And I mean, I would have like characters like Galobulus over here, but they, you know, they haven't released one. Pythona, a lot of us old school G.I. Joe fans have always wanted a Pythona figure. Here she is, she looks awesome. And you know, Pythona, Serpentor, Nemesis Enforcer, not Nemesis Immortal, Ugh, stupid copyright. But yeah, so they're kind of together. You got the Cobra Law kind of people, right? And then, uh, well, we'll get back to them. And then over here, we have like kind of more of the, the movie G.I. Joe figures. Like Beachhead had, I don't know why he had so much uh, sc uh, sc screen time in the uh, animated movie, but you know, Beachhead was kind of had a prominent role in the animated uh, G.I. Joe movie, and Hawk, of course, and then you know, Falcon made his debut, voiced by Don Johnson, back here, and then you know, still kind of keeping up that movie vibe. You know, Jinx made her debut, her animated uh, cartoon debut in the animated movie, and of course, Sergeant Slaughter. This is a uh, a Comic Con. I obtained all these on eBay. I did not go. To, I have not been to a Comic Con. I obtained, uh, yeah, these on eBay and whatever else. That's Sergeant Slaughter. Um, yeah, they, they don't release him all the time. 
nowadays because of like trade like copyright trademark stuff you know he was a special figure he's a wrestling figure kind of at the time so there hasn't been too many newer releases of a gi joe sergeant slaughter figure i don't know so what is so what i said makes sense i don't know if all that makes sense this right here is pimp daddy destro um this is a re-release the the name pimp daddy destro was given to him by the fans because of the odd choice of the color scheme they gave to him uh, originally, like, what was it, a late 90s figure from the older version, the older toy look? Um, so this is a re-release with the intention, like, they, like, hey, we're going to re-release, quote-unquote, Pimp Daddy Destro because, you know, it's so funny. And I, I like it when toy companies do that. They, like, want to be a part. They want to be part of the gag, you know? By the way, I was going to get this signed by Arthur Burkhart, who voices Destro again. Uh, I was gonna get this signed by him at one of the conventions, whatever, whichever one he was at. But, uh, well, apparently he uh, he takes offense to the whole pimp daddy Destro comment. He takes offense to that. Um, and there was a guy there who was with him, uh, like a helper, a volunteer helper guy who was sitting there and he was like, yeah, he, he's just offended by it. He thinks blah, 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 blah. And, you know, he was talking to me about why he's offended by it. And it's not the details aren't important, but I'll just say uh, I was told he would have it signed for one hundred and fifty dollars, which I passed up. Oh, and the guy told me the um, volunteer told me uh, it was either one or two, two or one people said, OK, I'm going to pony up. So I think probably two hey who knows maybe three people out there in the whole wide world have an autograph of pimp daddy destro uh, could be the newer version older version whatever but uh yeah not not that many autographed i was not gonna spend 150 dollars to get that autograph man that's funny this behind here that's oop, that's a uh, gi joe uh, serpentor excuse me this is a gi joe oh god back heavy nemesis enforcer with your wings. This is a G.I. Joe uh, Transformers exclusive from the cartoon Old Snake when Cobra Commander did a crossover in season three of the Transformers cartoon. So that is Old Snake. That's why he's kind of over here. Like, you know, this is kind of like the season, the, the late G.I. Joe stuff. And I mean, yeah, see, once again, over here we got from the same episode, uh, Only Human, when, uh, you know, the Autobots were like... Uh, Long story short, I'll just say the Autobots were turned into uh, human beings. Let's just say that. They were taken out of the robot bodies, whatever. So that's like uh, Hot Rod Rodimus right there and uh, RC, of course. They didn't do Springer and um, Ultra Magnus. I think they were gonna or something. I, you know, I can't remember. I can't remember all the details. But uh, okay, so yeah, old snake back there with a couple of uh, Cobra Bats. And I'm being told I need to change my battery pack. That's funny. Oh, Lulu. See, I told you this would take forever, but that's okay, right? Good girl. How you doing? Let's get back to it, okay? All right, guys. So where was I? Um, just finished up what over here. So on the left side, we got more G.I. Joe. Uh, once again, a lot of the head honcho kind of guys. Like I got the head honcho Cobras over here. Major Blood, Zartan, Baroness, Storm Shadow, Firefly in the back. Dr. Mindbender, Destro, Cobra Commander, and uh, I guess Copperhead? I've always had kind of a soft spot for Copperhead. And... Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, G.I. Joe's over here, you know, a lot of the head honchos, once again, Duke and Flint, uh, Roadblock in the back there, Scarlet, Stalker, believe it or not, Stalker's kind of a head honcho, didn't have a prominent role in the cartoon, Lady J, Shipwreck, I guess, yeah, everyone loves Shipwreck, I do, and Snake Eyes. So in the back, more carded figures, let me just get down here, alright, so, um, Pat, Pat, uh, Pat Fraley voiced, uh, well, most notably Krang in the original Turtles cartoon, but he did some G.I. Joe stuff before that. And uh, once again, this is like a two-pack. He voiced Wild Weasel, the Wild Weasel character, just uh, the guy in the suit, Wild Weasel. That's what they called him. Uh, and he voiced Ace. So uh, I, I always thought it was cool to get the two-packs autographed, you know, by the same guy or multiple voice actors. As you can see over here, you know, Michael Bell Duke and Arthur Berghart voices Destro. Yeah, so, oh, Gung Ho, I forgot about you. Is Gung, Gung Ho is in the back there, too. 
Anyway, um, yeah, so another, another two, but yeah, there's the autographs right there and, uh, oh, kind of, yeah, under the American flag right there. <laughs> so yeah, a couple of autographs right there from these guys. You got Roadblock there. I haven't met his voice. You know, not all these actors like, hey, I, I need to do these conventions, right? I need to go to them. Not everyone's into it or just, you know, whatever. They have their lives. It's too bad, right? Too bad. Like to meet them all. Uh, anyway, let's, what am I, I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. How long have I been showing you guys all this? Michael Bell voiced one of the uh, Crimson Twins there. And Tomax and Zaymot 2-pack. That's cool. Another one, this is from, yeah, some of them are from the 25th anniversary, some of them are, this is a little older, these are the older model Joes, you can kind of see, see the screws in their arms, screws in their arms, I mean, they look older, right, and then, uh, yeah, these are the newer ones, uh, anyway, this is like, a Snake Eyes Storm Shadow 2-pack, or no, no, I'm sorry, a Storm Shadow a Firefly 2-pack, because that's Firefly over there, and it's signed by, a, by a Greg Berger, who voiced Firefly. So yeah, this is like my G.I. Joe row, pretty much, above that. I mean, I try to keep it, like like I said, you have to put what fits where it goes. I try and organize, quote unquote, organize it as best I can. But you know, but speaking of organized, this is like my little turtle section right here, this little, this little pocket. And uh, these are like comic, comic turtles sticking out in the front there, they're toy figures. Some people to this day still don't know. I think I've, I, I posted an Instagram picture of one of these dudes one time way back a couple years ago. And uh, which one was it? I th you know, I think it was Leonardo. Yeah, I posted a picture of him online and I got comments like, why is Raphael holding Leonardo's swords, Dave? People still don't know to this day that originally they all wore red. It's funny. Anyway, all these dudes are signed by their respected voice actor. It's just uh, Barry Gordon. Donatello, who I, I've never met. And uh, unfortunately, there's some people that we can't meet because they pass away, which is unfortunate. But uh, <clears throat> almost all the turtles here, Cam Clark, Leonardo, these are not original turtles. These are like 2000 whatever reissues, but they, yeah, they look nice. They look nice and they're clean. So uh, yeah, Leonardo, Cam Clark, uh, Townsend Coleman, Michelangelo. I ran in the him. Do I have anything else autographed by him? I think I do. Oh, right. Uh, Sentinel Prime upstairs. Didn't I talk about that already? From Transformers Animated. So yeah, Michelangelo. Rob Polson, Raphael. And Pat uh, Fraley down here is crying. Pat is a cool dude. <laughs> He's a cool guy. They're all cool guys. Don't get me wrong. Uh, before we go down below, let's go over this way, actually. We'll go left to right. Uh, this is like a miss, uh, mismatch here of various things. Like, this is Transformers Animated, 2-pack, Optimus Prime and Megatron. David K voiced Optimus Prime in Transformers Animated. So, hey, let's take advantage of that, right? Get them to sign for Prime on something. And a couple of, like, exclusive. Uh, that's actually a repaint, and that's Pterosaur right there. So uh, I got him at uh, one of the BotCons, the last BotCon as well. And this right over here, this is a, uh, this is a G.I. Joe uh, re-release of the G.I. Joe Shark. And this is actually, uh, that is Hal Rail. And I, I have some other stuff uh, autographed by Hal Rail. Maybe I missed it upstairs. I mean, I didn't, didn't go over every single thing, but but yeah, I met Hal Rail at the, uh, I did mention that Shardicon convention in North Carolina. That's where I bumped into him. So that's pretty neat. Okay, now we can move down below here. So yeah, like a Grimlock Fall of Cybertron. I have Greg Berger on almost everything I have here. It's crazy. This is a re-release original Generation 1 Soundwave. Not autographed by Frank Welker, because I haven't bumped into him yet, but that'd be kind of cool. At some point, we'll see. And, uh, you know, the uh, re-releases of some Beast War figures. A lot of them signed. Like, pretty much everything on this bookshelf is signed, actually. At least the majority of stuff. Like Richard Newman, once again. And then we've seen that. Oh, no, wait, we haven't seen this over here. 
Cam Clark also voiced original Rocksteady from the cartoon as well, so. And then I thought, hey, you know, it's kind of cool that Rob Paulson not only voiced original Raphael, but in that 2012 Nickelodeon Turtles cartoon voiced Donatello, it's kind of, uh, it's pretty, it's pretty cool. They don't come any greater than Rob Paulson, really. Once again, another James Horn, Will Jack. And uh, we, have, uh, we have Blur over here. That's awesome. Signed by, oh, yeah, I'm trying to think, I was quiet because I was trying to think of the name. Oh, it's embarrassing. John, John something, I, the name escapes me. He was, at a time, the fastest talking man until he was beat out by someone. He was at um, TFCon 2015 as well. J John M Moschetta? Is it? I think. Oh, it's coming back to me. I used to, I, I feel like I could pull this information out quicker than I can now. That's embarrassing. Uh, down here, yeah, we have some more Transformer figures. Uh, Mike McConaughey, who was the original Trax. I got his autograph there. It's an, you can kind of. There you go. It's like better looking. Some autographs are sloppier than others, man. Paul Elding, eating. As original Perceptor, I was talking about him upstairs a little bit. Before the original voice actor of Cyclonus passed away, um, yeah, in the uh, season four miniseries, uh, Alan Oppenheimer jumped in and started voicing Cyclonus for a little bit. Um, the original actor's name escapes me right now. Um, wasn't it something Carmichael? I can't recall right now, but um, yeah. So original Generation 1 Cyclonus had a couple of voice actors actually. And you know, there's just a typical Prowl, you know, voiced by typical Michael Bell. And let's move over here, Steve Bloom. Once again, we know him from Starscream and Transformers Prime. He's, he, a lot of people would probably put him in the top three of, you know, out of all the various Starscreams throughout the years, they probably put his version in that top three. Transformers Prime Star Scream, I would say, and I would say they're probably right. You know, probably original Generation 1, Transformers Prime, and if I would to throw a third in there, probably Transformers Animated Star Scream. What do you guys think? I mean, it's not like there's that many, and I'm not talking comics here, I'm just talking cartoons. Anyway, here is a Transformers Universe Depth Charge, signed by David Subalov. And another, you know, one of those G.I. Joe three packs. So this finishes things off here. A torpedo, shipwreck, and a wetsuit three pack here. And we have these, uh, I got a, a, a duo autograph here by Neil Ross and, uh, oh God, once again, the name escapes me. It's, it's horrible. And you know what, I have more Neil Ross stuff autographed. Once again, guys, like I tried to show you pretty much all of it, but some of it escapes me. I mean, it's it's out and about throughout the house somewhere in my room, in my upstairs room specifically, and I can't even find it. There's just so many, so many autographs. Uh, I don't know. I don't know anymore. This has been going on too long. I think I'm starting to lose my mind. So yeah, this is kind of more of the, in my opinion, the higher end or nicer stuff uh, that I have out on display here. Um, I can't wait to show you guys my new place. I don't know how long it's going to take me to set it up. And uh, I, I hope to have a lot out on display. I also very much hope that it looks a whole lot nicer. And uh, I think that's it. I think that's it. I feel like, I mean, sure, there's got to be some stuff I'm missing here and there. Um, I don't know, maybe some of you don't care about every single autograph I have on every single figure, but you, you asked for it, you got it. I got to go have some water, all this, uh, my voice is hoarse from this room tour, which has probably been going on too long, but that's it. That's like all of it. So I don't know if I'm actually going to post this. Before I'm, I might post this before and then just do another video of the after which is going to be my new setup. We'll see how that goes
I'll probably have to do it that way because who knows how long it's going to take me. I want to do it right. So that means you got to do it slowly. You got to paint it up. You got to get all the furniture right. And you got to make it look nice, right? So, uh, yeah, good stuff, guys. There's my tour. There's my toy tour, my room tour, uh, whatever you want to say. So, there you go.